Section 6.3 is going to be all about exponential functions. So we want to start out by uh, remembering how to tell if a set of data is linear, exponential, or neither. So your data is going to be linear if there is a constant average rate of change, which is a fancy way of saying slope. So if the slope is the same throughout all of your data, then you're going to have a linear function. So the way that we check that is we're going to actually find the slope between each consecutive order pair and check to see if they're the same. But then we have an exponential function if there is a constant ratio. Ratio means that we divide the uh, or divide the two numbers. So constant ratio of consecutive outputs. Outputs are the y values. Ratio means we are dividing. So linear, we're going to check to see by subtracting. Exponential, we check to see by dividing. So let's check this first one. So we're going to be finding the slope between each consecutive ordered pair. So we'll do uh, between these two, 2 minus 5 over 0 minus negative 1, which is negative 3 over negative 1. Whoops, negative 3 over positive 1, my bad. So negative 3. Then between, I already did those, these two, negative 1 minus 2 over 1 minus 0. So negative 3 over 1. So negative 3 again. And then these two, negative 4 minus negative 1 over 2 minus 1, which is negative 3 over 1. And then the last two, negative 7 minus negative 4 over 3 minus 2. So that is negative 3 over 1 again. So this is telling us that our slope or our average rate of change between each consecutive ordered pair is negative 3. So that tells us we have a linear relationship. So here we have linear because we have a constant slope or average rate of change so our slope is negative 3 and we can tell from the data we're lucky because they gave us the y-intercept here of 0 2 so we can actually go ahead and write that equation y equals negative 3x plus 2 in slope intercept form. Okay, let's check this one. So we'll start by checking the slope. So we go 4 minus 2 over 0 minus negative 1. So that's 2 over 1. So our slope would be 2. Go again. 7 minus 4, 1 minus 0. That is 3 over 1. So uh, this already, we can tell it is not linear because the slopes don't match up. Okay, so let's check for exponential. In exponential, we're going to be checking the ratio. So the ratio of outputs. So I'm going to do 4 over 2. So between my first two, 4 over 2, that ratio is 2. Then between my next two, 7 over 4, that ratio is not 2. So here I can tell it is not exponential. So right now we're not going to go beyond knowing if it's linear or exponential. So we're just going to walk away from that one, go to the next one, check our slopes. 16 minus 32 over 0 minus negative 1. So that is negative 16 over negative 1. So 16. That's over positive 1. Man, second time I've done that mistake today. Okay, then 8 minus 16 over 1 minus 0. So that's negative 8 over 1. So it's not linear. 
So then we'll go to check the outputs. Ratio of outputs. So 16 over 32 is one half. 8 over 16 is one half. 4 over 8 is one half. 2 over 4 is one half. Okay, so we know that it's exponential because the ratio of the outputs is constant. But this tells us even more information than that. So it's exponential because there's a constant ratio of outputs. And we can tell that the base of the exponential function is going to be one half. So um, just as a, I don't know, reminder or completely new information, depending if you knew this before, an exponential model, exponential model has the form y equals a, which is um, like a coefficient or a constant term out front, times a numerical base raised up to the power of x. So we can actually figure out the equation for this exponential function. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to pick any ordered pair. To find a since we know the base is one half, then we just choose any of the ordered pairs off of our list and use the base of one half in this format. So we'll take the y value equals a is going to remain a times one half and then to the power of whatever we choose for x. Uh, a convenient one to choose is zero for x or one. Either zero or one are good choices um, when you're doing this. So let me choose zero, sixteen. Actually maybe I'll do it with both just so you can see that it's that it works out. So if I put 16 in for y, a is what I'm solving for, the base is 1 half, and then the x coordinate is 0. Well, 1 half to the 0 power is 1. So I've already solved for a, which is 16. So when I rewrite my model, it will be y equals 16 times 1 half to the x power. Just to verify, let's go ahead and do uh, this other ordered pair as well. So we'd have y, which is a, 8 equals a times 1 half to the first power. So that's a equals 1 half times a. Multiply both sides by 2, we get 16 equals a. So it will work for any of the ordered pairs that you choose, but try and pick one that's going to be convenient to work with. Let's learn about the parent function for the exponential family. If you don't remember this from a previous course, or if this is new information, um, the parent functions that we've studied in the past, like parabolas and square roots and reciprocal functions and absolute values, all of those, uh, we always did those by like figuring out the starting point and then using a pattern to graph them. And then um, we would use transformations. Well, with this parent function, it's slightly different. It's going to have three special points instead of a start point and a growing pattern. Uh, but then the transformations are still going to apply to these. So our three special points are going to be negative 1, 0, and 1 for the x values. And then if you think about uh, taking a base raised to the power of 1, we'll start with that one base raised to the power of 1 would just give us back the base. So it's going to be 1 comma whatever the base is. So when we, if I mark this as my base, and I go over to x equals 1, and 1 base is my ordered pair. If I put 0 in for x, then base raised to the 0 power would give me 1. So 0, 1 is on all of these functions before transformations. And then if I put negative 1 in for x, then I'll have base to the negative 1 power. 
that negative 1 is going to cause the base to be moved into the denominator. So it will be negative 1, 1 over base. So like if our base was 3, then this order pair would be negative 1, 1 third. Since the base, like the higher the negative number, the smaller this fraction. So like say my base was 2 and I raised that to the negative fifth power, then my output would be 1 over 32. If I raise it to the negative sixth power, 1 over 64. Negative seventh power, 1 over 128. Negative eighth power, 1 over 256. So it never crosses this line of y equals 0 unless there's a transformation, but the parent function never crosses it. And then the higher the power gets, so I'll be like 2 to the first is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 to the third is 8, 2 to the fourth is 16. So it just grows very, very quickly. So the graph looks like this. It's going to run along this horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. And then it's going to zoom away from the horizontal asymptote. The domain for every exponential function is negative infinity to infinity. The range will vary depending on where your horizontal asymptote is, but it's going to, um, if the function is zooming up like this, it's going to start at the value of the horizontal asymptote and head towards infinity. Now, since it can never cross that horizontal asymptote, because I can't take uh, like 2 to any number is never going to give me 0, it's not going to include 0. So for that reason, the range on exponential functions will always be an open-ended interval. Okay, let's look at 1 to 1. Oh, yes. Um, these functions are 1 to 1 functions, meaning that they pass the vertical line test and they pass the horizontal line test. So if we were to find the inverse, the inverse would also be a function. Um, when your base is bigger than 1, your function is going to be an increasing function. If your base is between 0 and 1, like a fraction, then what happens is it's reflected across the y-axis. And I'll show you, let's see, let me sneak peek ahead because I can show you why that happens. Yes, I'll show you why that happens a little bit later. Okay. All right, all right. Let's look at our first example using an actual number for the base. So whenever I go to graph these exponential functions, um, the first thing I want to do personally is identify what the base is and get my three special points so that I have a foundation of how to graph. So the base is always going to be the number that has the exponent um, attached to it. So the base here is 5, which is going to give me my three special points of negative 1, uh, 1 over base, so 1 fifth, and then 0, 1, and then the other one is 1 comma base, so the base here will be 5. This function does not have any transformations. It just has the base and a power of x. So these points are going to go right onto the graph. So negative 1, 1 fifth. 1 fifth is like 0 0.2. 0, 1. And 1, 5. Now if I were to put 2 in for x, an input of 2 would give me an output of 25. So 2, 25 would be way up there. Remember that these graphs start out with a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, unless we have transformations. This one does not have any transformations, so I still have that horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And when I go to graph these functions, one end of the graph is going to run along the horizontal asymptote, the other end of the graph is going to run away from the horizontal asymptote or zoom away from the asymptote. So I know that these three points are not a lot, but remember we've got to connect to these three points and then one end is going to run along the asymptote, the other end zooms away from the asymptote. Then domain and range, remember the domain is always the same for these graphs, negative infinity to infinity. 
and the range is going to be related to that horizontal asymptote. So on this one, you can see that it goes from zero to positive infinity, but again, does not include zero since uh, the function will never equal zero. Related to these parent functions um, is the natural exponential function. I mean, it is just basically an exponential function, but it has a base of e. Now, e is a special irrational number. It happens to show up a lot in uh, things that we study, like in nature, like it's a naturally occurring number that just keep kept showing up, you know, over and over and over again. And so it got you know, special notoriety. And so it has its own letter. And if you remember that E is approximately 2.7, you'll be good. So it's about 2.72 is what it would round to, but maybe 2.718. What If you just remember it's around 2.7, that'll be good enough. But I, it goes forever. It goes, goes, goes. But these are the digits that I know it, that I know it to. And it goes along with a story. So I'll tell you the story. You don't need to remember it, but it's kind of entertaining. So it starts with um, Andrew Jackson, who was the seventh president of the United States. He served two terms that began in 1828. So we just write 1828 twice. He lived to the ripe old age of 90. And rumor is he carried a 45 on each side. So that's how I remember it. Um, this part of it is true. He did not live to the age of 90, and I can't uh, verify or deny if he carried any weapons. So when we go to graph y equals e to the x, e is just a number. So when you see it in an equation, it's not representing a variable. It's representing a numerical value. So when I do negative 1, 1 over e, then I'm just going to be getting um, a numerical approximation. And you can do that with your calculator. Let's see if I can locate my calculator. Got it. Okay. Um, there, the E button, there are two locations. One is right here. It's the second function for divide. The other is the second function for LN, which is right there. But this one is going to give you e to a power. If I just want e, it's second divide. So if I go 1 over e, enter, that's about 0.367. So when you're graphing these, if you think about e being roughly equal to 3, then 1 over e is roughly equal to a third. And that's honestly about as um, accurate as you're going to graph it on paper anyway. So negative 1, 1 over e would be about a third, 0, 1 here, and then 1e, e, e is about 2.72, so 2.7-ish, right in there. Remember that it is a exponential function, so it has a horizontal asymptote, asymptote still at y equals 0. So when we go to graph this, one end of the function is going to zoom along the asymptote, the, uh, and then we got to go through these three points, and the other end zooms away from the asymptote. So this just looks like any old regular exponential function, like that. Domain is still negative infinity to infinity, and the range is still related to the horizontal asymptote. This one starts at the value of the horizontal asymptote and goes towards infinity. So we have 0 to infinity for that range. Let's see what's on our next page. Oh, next up we have transformations. And that's going to be a couple of pages worth of notes. So I think I'm going to end the video here and come back and pick that up later.